Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a viewer request from Mr. Serif, and he wants to know how do you remove the UFL connector from an antenna and prepare it for direct solder? Well, guess what? Today, we're gonna do exactly that. Before we roll up our sleeves and actually get into things, I wanna give you a quick tip. For today's example, I'm using a Lumineer micro axi antenna, and this one's broken. And the reason I know it's broken is because if you shake these and you hear a rattling inside, they're broken, they're not doing you any good, you need to replace the antenna. Uh, in fact, they have like this little ceramic cartridge inside of them, and that's what you're hearing rattling around inside. Uh, this thing has come loose and your antenna is not working properly. So unfortunately, at that point, you need to replace it. Uh, but that's why I'm using this one as an example. So I guess let's just shoot to the overhead and get into it. Let me start explaining exactly what it is we're after while we're stripping back this cable and all the different components of everything that we have here. I have this piece of wire as an example and this is just regular coax cable wire. I believe this is RG6 and most of you are familiar with that. Uh, you probably all have this in your homes and you've grown up with it so you've seen this a million times. Well the reason I'm using this as an example is because our antenna wires are also coaxial cables. Now, of course, the wire is a much smaller gauge than your cable television wire, but the makeup of the wire is identical, and so therefore, I'm gonna use this larger gauge wire to show you exactly how we're going to be stripping things, just to make it a little bit easier, because as you can see, a prepped antenna, the different components to it can be quite small, and I'm worried that you may not be able to see exactly what I'm doing, in this video. So anyway, back to our coax. Our different components consist of the outside jacket of the wire, the inner shielding or braid of the wire, we have a dielectric, and we also have a center core. The center core is actually the part of the wire that the signal is going to travel down. Now, it is very important that all of these pieces are stripped correctly or you're not gonna get the performance out of your antenna that you're expecting. So while we strip this, when we cut the jacket back, we're gonna cut it just enough to reveal the braiding. We don't wanna cut through the braiding. Then, in the second part of the cable, we're gonna cut that braiding just enough to reveal the dielectric. We don't wanna cut into the dielectric, and we also wanna be careful not to deform this. In a lot of cases, the integrity of this center dielectric can be very important so essentially, we want to make sure that we don't damage it. Then the next component that we will strip down to is the center core. And of course, we want to make sure that we don't cut this part off while we're stripping the cable. With the smaller gauge wire, it's going to be very easy to cut too deep. In fact, they actually make a tool to strip these larger gauge wires. I'm willing to bet a tool is available for these smaller coaxes as well. But honestly, I don't strip these enough to probably justify buying a tool. Maybe I'll do this once or twice a year. And these axes are actually available now in a direct solder. So it kind of eliminates the need uh, from having to modify one of these. Uh, but you know, we have plenty of wire here. So if we mess up, we can just cut back a little further and try it again. The wire length overall is important, but for what we're doing today, I don't think it's gonna matter too much in the grand scheme of things. Of course, the RF expert is going to make the argument that yes, this wire length does matter in order to optimize your range. But again, today and in the environments we're flying in, not a huge deal. Now, let's compare our cable wire to a pre-stripped antenna. So you can see we have the outer jacket, outer jacket. Right here, we have the center braiding. That's our shield. Here we have our braiding. Then we have the dielectric right here. And then of course we have our center core. We have our center core. So we need to duplicate this type of stripping pattern on the wire that we're gonna be cutting. What is important is the lengths in which these items are stripped. We don't wanna have too much of this dielectric and center exposed because that is going to allow interference to seep in to our antenna. We don't want interference. So we need to keep these like literally as tight as possible. Well, realistically as tight as possible. When we line these strip points up on a ruler, we can see that they're about an eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch 
And of course, our tip is a little bit less. This is about a 16th. That's okay. If it's a little bit longer, that's okay too. So again, this is exactly what we're going to have to duplicate on our cable. And it's not easy on these tiny little wires, but we can do it. I know it. Okay, so we've been through all the examples. Now it's time to actually cut and start stripping our wire. Phase one, literally remove the existing connector. Again, like I said, try to leave as much wire as you can. If this is your first time, just in case if you make a mistake, then that way it'll give you multiple opportunities to try to make that correction. So let's just, whoop, gone. I find it easiest to strip our cable in sections. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut all the way down to the center and completely remove that end. Then I'm going to cut through the outside jacket and through the shielding, exposing the dielectric, and I'm going to remove that. Then finally, I'm going to cut just the jacket, exposing the shielding, and then we'll remove that. So let's get to it and start stripping our cable. I want to make sure that I'm using a rather sharp X-Acto knife. It's going to make this procedure a little bit easier. And as I cut, I like to roll the cable as I'm applying pressure. And again, you need to be careful. It's super easy just to get too deep and literally just cut the whole end of the antenna off. So in this case, I made it through the outside jacket. I'm starting to get into the shielding. Let's remove the shielding here. We'll make sure all that is gone. And a nice sharp blade here is gonna be key. It's gonna make this easy. Okay, time to remove the dielectric. And there we go. We have our core exposed. Now I'm gonna move back about an eighth of an inch and I'm going to expose the dielectric. Same technique, I'm gonna roll the antenna wire as I'm starting to cut it, and I wanna be you know, careful. If I have to do this in multiple stages, that's fine, but you don't wanna to cut too deep because then you're essentially gonna to have to start over again. So phase one, cut in. This is absolutely perfect. I've got the outside jacket insulation off, and now I'm going to remove that shielding. Take your time while you're removing that shielding. You definitely don't want to cut too deep and you want to be careful not to get into the dielectric. Another point worth making is if any of those strands from the shield are touching your core, your antenna is not going to function properly and it will seriously reduce your range. So once I'm satisfied with all this, my tip looks good, my dielectric looks good. Now we're ready to go back another eighth inch and expose the shielding. You should be a pro at this part right now, you should have this feel down. You should literally be able to feel the pressure that you're putting into this cable and where it's touching that metal braiding. There's definitely a difference in the feel when you're cutting, you know, the vinyl versus when you actually hit the metal. Okay, we're done. Antenna strip and everything looks pretty good. Our example, we can see we've duplicated that, but on a much smaller scale. We have our outside jacket, we have our shielding, we have our dielectric, and we have our center core. Same thing, jacket, shielding, dielectric, core. Now we're ready to put some solder on this and prepare it for installation. We need to tin the core. Be careful with your soldering iron and the heat that you're putting in here. You definitely do not want to overheat this. You should be in and out really quickly, both here and while you're soldering the antenna to your VTX. So real quick, if you have to get in and out a couple of times like that, but that is literally it, that's done. Now we're ready to tin the shielding and essentially we're gonna wanna do the same technique. We wanna be careful not to damage the dielectric by putting too much heat into that braided shield. Same thing, we're just real quick, in and out, tap with the iron in the solder, tap with the iron in the solder, do it as quickly as you can. This antenna looks pretty good. You can see what I'm saying with the heat as we've discolored this jacket a little bit, but that's okay. Everything looks really good soldering wise, both on the shield and on the tip. This baby is ready to attach to a VTX. Well, there you have it. 
there are some of my tips and tricks to prepare an antenna for direct solder. In the past, I've done a video on how to solder your antenna to your VTX. In case you missed that one, I'm going to include a link in the description because it's the next logical step from here. But that's it. That's all I got for today. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>